Hello, everyone. We are so excited that you are joining us today. We are live at Seesaw headquarters, and we are here to talk about jobs in computer science. We're going to give you a peek inside a startup today. So thanks for joining us today. The first thing you should know is I'm Angela, and I lead the community team here. And that means that I get to work with teachers all over the world that use Seesaw and make sure that they have some ideas that they can share with other teachers and make connections. And I might even work with your teacher, or your teacher maybe has connected with teachers that I work with too. I was a kindergarten teacher for 15 years before I came to Seesaw, and I actually live in Minnesota, so I'm visiting CESA headquarters this week. Today, we are going to meet some more people that work at CESA. We're going to peek at jobs that are here at a startup, and we're going to explore some engineering vocabulary and answer your questions at the end. So keep thinking about what you might want to ask us, but let's meet some CESA team members. So first, hi, everyone. My name is Maria Inez. I am a software engineer. So that means that I write the code that makes the Seesaw app work. Um, and I work specifically on activities features. So when your teacher assigns you an activity to do in the app, uh, that's all my team. Awesome. And I'm Chris. Uh, I'm also a software engineer, also working on uh, writing code. But the code that I write is a little bit different. It works on keeping Seesaw fast and safe so that uh, no one's able to get at uh, your data who shouldn't be able to, and so that you can keep using Seesaw without having to wait, you know, minutes and minutes and minutes for the page to reload. Awesome. <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm Ashley. I work as a teacher success, success specialist here at Seesaw. Um, my job is that every day teachers all over the world send me emails with their questions about Seesaw. And it's my job to read those emails and make sure that they get the help that they need so they can keep using Seesaw in your class. Um, my team is also responsible for spotting problems that teachers may be having um, that maybe someone like Chris or Maria Inez need to look at um, to fix. So. So Seesaw keeps running smoothly. I don't work in an office like a lot of other people. I work here at home. Um, I live in the mountains outside of a teeny tiny coastal town in Maine. So I get to spend all day with my dog and two cats. That sounds amazing. <laughs> all right. So we're going to peek inside Seesaw headquarters because who doesn't love to go backstage at places, right? So first of all, you should know that Seesaw headquarters is in San Francisco, California. Like I said, I work in Minnesota at my house. Um, and Ashley shared too that she's, she's not in California either. So when you come to Seesaw headquarters, this is what it looks like when you get off the elevator because we're on the seventh floor of a tall building. Um, and you'll notice it's kind of like a classroom. Lots of desks, tables. Nobody has their own office at Seesaw. It's kind of like one big open space. You'll notice we carry backpacks too. So you might have backpacks that you're hauling your stuff to school with each and every day. So we do the same thing. We also have this area that's called the playground. And this is really where we eat lunch. We have big meetings every Monday morning. We have a team meeting. So everybody that works at CESA comes into this space. We also have these conference rooms. So these are the rooms that we're sitting in actually right now. So the one that we're sitting in is the one with the orange sign that you can see in this photo. And I think it's called Hopscotch. And Ashley, of course, is working from her home. So she's using our webinar software to connect that way too, which is pretty awesome. The other spot I want to show you is the kitchen, kind of a snack area, right? Yep. Um, we know that your brain needs to stay alert and focused when we're doing this work, just probably like you at school have snacks. So we want to make sure everybody at CESA stays fueled and ready to kind of keep working and building. So let's talk about some of the jobs that happen or exist at a startup. So the first job these are the co-founders. So this is Carl and Adrian, and these two are the ones that thought of the idea of CESA. So they're kind of like the bosses, but they really work with everybody each day. Then we have software engineers. What do software engineers do? Uh, so software engineers are the ones who uh, talk to the computer in a language that the computer understands to get it to uh, show you all the cool content that you're making on CESA. So everybody on the engineering team knows how to code like really well, mm -hmm. really well. All right, and then we have the product team. 
Yeah, so the product team is, uh, our product is the Seesaw app, that's our product, and so the product team is in charge of deciding, well, what does the Seesaw app do? How does it look? So they design the, the app and they work closely with engineers to tell us what to make the Seesaw app look like and do. Then we have the operations and teacher success team that Ashley is going to tell us about. All right. So operations is not like an operator, you know, like a like a surgeon. So they're not operating on anything. These are the nuts and bolts of the actual company. So these are the ones who do all the paperwork and do all the filing and stuff like that. The teacher success team, like I said before, we handle questions from parents, teachers and sometimes even students. And then we have the partnerships team. So this team works with schools to make sure that they can get schools set up with CESA. So if your whole school uses CESA, they help those schools get set up, or maybe your whole entire district uses CESA, so they would help with that too. Then we have the marketing team, and I'm gonna go to the next slide because it continues. We have the community marketing team, and we're really responsible for making sure people know about CESA or that they can learn about CESA. So we work with teachers to make sure they have all, all the information that they need um, to keep going with CESA. And I think the thing to remember is collaboration is key. So even today at school, I'm sure you are going to have to work as a team. You're going to have to solve problems. You're going to have to figure things out. And that's really getting you prepared for any job that you have in the future, but specifically working at, at a place like Seesaw. And we're going to show, show you some fancy words, some vocabulary that software engineers use each day. So let's get started. What's this first one? Do you want to talk about it? Sure. Or Maria, are you going to talk about it? Okay, so uh, code is the language that computers know how to read. So uh, behind the scenes, the computer isn't talking to you in English most of the time. It's using ones and zeros and that gets turned into all these funny characters that you see on the screen right here. So um, yeah, co code are the instructions that tell the computer what to do first, second, and what to show on the screen. It looks like, wow, a big jumble to me, because mm -hmm. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Either. All right, what about this one? All right, so have you ever been using Seesaw and something doesn't work quite right or something gets messed up? When that happens, we call it a bug, and that means that there's some problem in the code that Chris just talked about that is not working correctly. So when we find bugs, or you guys find bugs, and you tell us about the bugs, uh, us, the engineers, have to go into the code and fix them so that things work well again. And sometimes, you hopefully have not experienced this too much, but if an app gets a really big bug, it will crash, and that means you kind of get kicked out of the app, you might lose your work, so that's really bad. We really hope that doesn't happen, and we try hard to prevent that from happening. So uh, another word that we use is pull request. So um, basically, when we're coding up our work, in order to prevent bugs and especially crashes, we review each other's work. So just mm -hmm. like you might have uh, your teacher check your work or, or maybe even uh, have a, uh, another student peer review your work, we do the same thing with the code that we write. Yeah, so I think another example is if, like, I remember in elementary school writing stories, like a first draft. And then you would write that first draft and, you know, maybe you would have a friend look at it and they'd say, oh, you should fix this. That's kind of what happens in a pull request, right? Yeah, that's exactly. exactly right. And then the back end, uh, this is a part of the code that you hopefully will never see. This is uh, when you try to load your image. This is all the servers that are talking to each other that are uh, finding the, the correct image and sending it back to your computer so that it can display. And then we have the front end, Ashley. What's this? <laughs> well, the opposite of the back end is the front end. So if you never see the back end, the front end, front end is what you see all the time. So whenever you open the app, whenever you press a button, we call that the front end. Yeah, so the things that you get to use every single day in Seesaw is the front end. So we're going to answer some of your questions, and we're so excited to do this. That's our favorite part. Some people wrote in questions before, so we're going to spend just a minute answering this first question, and we'll give you time to share some questions live that you want your teacher to type in. So Chris is going to answer this first question. So Miss Smith's fifth grade class in Pennsylvania asked, how do you make coding secure, and how do you write a program that nobody can hack? Yeah, this is a great question. Um, so we spend a lot of time trying to think about 
how someone who is trying to hurt Seesaw or uh, maybe trying to steal data, we try to think about what they might do to take that. And then we think about all the different ways that uh, you can interact with the with Seesaw, all the buttons you can press, all the things you can type into the keyboard. And uh, and we just write a lot of code on the back that checks to make sure you know that the only thing that gets saved are the things that you are trying to save, the content that you're actually trying to create, and uh, nothing that uh, someone is trying to sneak into the system. Yeah, that's a, that's a big job. Um, so Ashley, I know that you want to do a, a couple shout outs here for some classrooms that are live, and we're going to go into some questions. So anyone you want to give a shout out to right now, Ashley? There are so many classes that are connected right now, and they're asking a million questions a second, and we love them all. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to Miss Clark's fifth grade class in Dublin, Ohio. We have Miss Swallow's class. We have Miss, let's see, I'm not going to say this name right, Miss Dominic, Miss Dominic's class. Uh, we have Mr. McKinney's class. We have Miss Kirk's class, Miss Uttermark's class. Uh, we have uh, Mrs. Sch uh, Schmidtman. We have Ms. Nappy's class in, let's see. Oh, she's in Maine. Hi, neighbor. Wow. <laughs> Hello. <I love> <laughs> um, so then we also. More, yep, she'll give a few more shout outs in a little bit. But right now, here's what I want you to do. We're going to play a little bit of music here for maybe 30 seconds to give you time to talk to your teacher and share a question you want them to type in. That's also going to give us time to look through all the questions we have. Make sure your teacher types in your grade level and the location when they're typing in their questions. So let's take about 30 seconds to type those questions in. Here we go. Okay, we have so many questions coming in. We'll try to go quickly and see how many we can get through live here today. Um, we're going to start with Ms. Brem's class, a seventh grade class in North Carolina. Hey, Ms. Brem's class. How long did it take to make the code when Seesaw started? So I'm going to jump into this one. I didn't build the code when it started, but I was in webinars yesterday with the founders who started Seesaw. And when they started, they took about three months to do kind of the first beta version of Seesaw, meaning the testing version. And then I think they said about three more months, so a total of about six months, to kind of get to a point that they could have an app that other people could use. But, I mean, we're still building code. Yep. For CISA all day yeah. long. So Five years later. Yeah. I mean it there's a there's a lot going on there that kind of continues to happen. Um, more questions coming in. Let's see. Boy, how often do bugs happen? This is Mr. Khan's class in Minnesota. Hello. How often do they happen? Well, um, we have uh, little bugs that happen once a week or so, but uh, the big bugs don't happen very often at all. Maybe once a month, do you think? Something like yeah. that. So and and we're very quick at uh, trying to answer all the bugs that come in. Yeah, and and sometimes there are itty bitty things that are quick to fix, and other mm -hmm. times it's a little bit more complicated, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, we actually catch bugs before they go out. So that's a big important yeah. part of the pull request process. Mm -hmm. When I get Chris to look at my code, sometimes he'll catch a bug and save us from actually releasing that into the wild. Yeah, that's great. We like to do that. Uh, Ms. Clark, Clark's fifth grade class, hello. Um, you have so many questions that you've asked, which is awesome. And the one we're going to answer is, did you have other jobs before you worked at Seesaw? Ashley, do you want to start? What other job did you have before you worked at Seesaw? Okay, so before I worked at Seesaw, I worked at every teacher's absolutely most favorite place on earth, Starbucks. And I worked at <laughs> And I worked at Starbucks for 18 years. So wow. pretty much my entire adult life, I was a Starbucks manager. And Love I it. loved it. I And I said I was a teacher. So that's what I did for 15 years before coming to Seesaw. And what about you, Chris? I was also a software developer, but I worked in healthcare. So I tried to help doctors take care of patients and uh, keep track of all the data. Awesome. 
And I was also a software engineer before uh, coming to Seesaw. I worked at Google, uh, you might have heard of it. Um, <laughs> a huge company uh, that works on a ton of different things, but I worked on Android applications. So if you or your parents have any Android uh, devices, I was working on those. Awesome. Ashley, you want to give a few more shout outs while we're, we're there's so many questions that so we're getting. So many questions. Yes. Yeah. All right. I uh, shout out to Miss is that Miss Vinny's class in California. We have um, let's see Miss Morgan's class. We have uh, Miss Alfred's class. We have uh, Miss Barry and Miss Irving's fifth grade class in Tallahassee, Florida. We have Miss Marsha's class, her third grade class in California. We have let's see. Oh my gosh, there's so many like the the questions are moving and I'm trying to get the class. <laughs> Uh, we have Miss Gladue's class. We have Miss Brem's class. Uh, Miss Morgan's class looks like seventh grade. Welcome. Um, let's see, Mr. Lee's third grade class. We have. Oh my gosh, you guys have so many questions that you've asked. It's amazing. So great. I love it. I love it. Okay, <laughs> we'll go back into questions because there's so many we still have to answer here. There's a lot. All right. Let's see. Okay, we are talking to. Miss Morgan is asking a question. I think this comes from Riley, who's in eighth grade. What kind of higher level education would you typically need to become a programmer? That's a great question. Um, there are a couple ways to become a programmer, actually. Uh, one way is by going to school and studying computer science in university. That's what I did. Um, but another way is uh, sometimes people study something else in college, but then decide they want to be a programmer and they do like what's called a coding boot camp, where they learn how to code in a shorter amount of time, like yeah. six months, and then they can be programmers also. Cool. And uh, some people don't even go to school at all for it. They'll, uh, there's a lot of free courses online, um, but going to school is a little bit easier because uh, it'll be more directed and it'll... Um, that you'll like make connections that can help you find internships and jobs if you're at school. Awesome. All right, shout out to Ms. Sandlin's class in California. They've been eagerly awaiting. Uh, we have so many more. Let's see. Um, we got we got to give a shout out to Miss uh, Moitoza's third grade class in Taunton, Massachusetts, because she had so many exclamation points. <laughs> All the exclamation points for her shout out. Oh my goodness. Let's see. Um, Okay, so my goodness, so many questions. I love it. Miss Chambers class is here today, which is awesome. Miss Hart's class is here. All right. Hi, Miss okay, Rakowski. So, yeah. uh, Miss Cool's class um, in Omaha, Nebraska. I don't know if I said your name right. I hope I did. Um, what was your inspiration to make Seesaw? So I will speak for the founders that created it. Basically, they created Seesaw because Carl, one of the founders, always asked his kids when they come, came home, what'd you do at school today? And they were like, nothing. Um, but he also, they also worked with teachers in their first app called Shadow Puppet um, and realized that teachers were trying to find ways to make sure they could communicate with families and also let students share their learning, even if they weren't using technology, maybe you're using materials in your classroom. How can all of that be captured and shared? So that's kind of how Seesaw came to be. So great question there. Thanks for asking that. Um, Mr. Wells' class is a fifth grade class in Canada. They want to know what year was Seesaw published. So the very first time that Seesaw was released was in January of 2015. So we're coming up on about four years of, of Seesaw being in. Um, so everybody can use it, which is awesome. What kind of education, Ms. Mr. Lee's third grade class in Canada wants to know, what kind of education do you need to be a computer programmer? We kind of talked a little bit about it, but what would you say quickly for that? Um, uh, yeah, well, the type of thing that you will learn if you're trying to become a programmer is um, things like how to write code and how to read code. So that again, that's the language that computers know how to speak. So you'll spend a lot of time understanding how a computer thinks in order yeah. to be able to tell a computer what to do. Awesome. Do you have any other tips? Uh, no, I think that sums it up. And I think I think the one thing I would say too is if we think back to being in third through eighth grade, like I shared earlier, anytime you're trying to solve a problem, or you're doing something that's really hard and you're like, ah, I don't know what to do. 
you're preparing yourself for coding and problem solving and working collaboratively with a lot of people. So keep up the good work there. Um, I think we just have, we're almost out of time, but I want to share one more thing and Ashley maybe can prepare our final shout outs, but we want you to take advantage of this contest that we have. And I've seen a lot of great submissions already coming into Seesaw Coders. Some of you that are here today, um, but you can create the next Seesaw class icon. So our designers want some ideas from you. So this activity is inside Seesaw. So your teacher can find it today and share it with you if you have time and you can design the next icon. We're actually going to choose three designs that our, our designer will actually use to inspire the next icons that go into Seesaw so everybody in the world could see it, which is pretty awesome. So before we say goodbye, Ashley, are there a couple final shout outs to give? Because we're so excited that everybody yes. can join us today. Yes, there are. We have Mrs. Rapp's third grade class from Spring City, Pennsylvania. We have a uh, hi to Mrs. Jacobs class in Newport Beach, California. Uh, let's see, shout out to Miss Ski's class. Hi, Miss Ski. And then we have, mm -hmm. let's see, Mrs. Dilly from Mentor, Ohio, um, and Miss Uttermark's fifth grade class in Minnesota. All right. And then we have uh, Miss, let's see if I can say it, from Bend, Oregon, Miss Sieberfein's class is also here as well. We have so many shout outs, Miss Ross's class. Oh my goodness. I wish we could just spend an hour just talking to everyone. Yeah. But I bet I they have other things to do. do. Right? <laughs> my goodness. Thanks so much for joining us today, everyone. And we can't wait to see what you think about the next class icon. We can't wait to see your design. So thanks, everyone. See you soon. Bye.